Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be getting ready for the day, trying some new makeup or showing you some new makeup products in action that I haven't actually used live on my channel before whilst sharing yet another very embarrassing story, this time about how I almost was killed. I almost lost my life while on a snowboarding holiday and <laughs> not in the way that you would think that that would happen. I have the new Laura Mercier foundation. I've got the very hyped Chanel blush. I've got one of the yet to be released Golan highlighters. I've got a Dior Quint that has not yet been released. And I have two of the new Laura Mercier High Vibe lipsticks. So if you would like to see me apply all these products, tell you how my thoughts on them whilst sharing a very silly, embarrassing story yet again, then keep watching. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this little number. So this is the one of the Dior Quints from, I think it's gonna be from the summer collection. It's called Rivage 533 is the number. Obviously a very neutral, very soft, very subtle palette, but I think there's something super, pretty and just sophisticated about it. So this is not officially available yet, I don't think, anywhere, but you know me, I just get my mitts on stuff. So I'm gonna start off with this middle shade, add a bit of the slightly deeper neutral on the bottom, and we'll just go from there. So today's story. I feel like it's gonna be a bit of a long one, so I think we're only gonna get like one story in today, but it's a pretty good one, <laughs> if you ask me. What I've realized when my first video like this was like really popular and everyone loved it, um, I started thinking, wow, you know, do I have other stories that are like funny, embarrassing, whatever, you know, laughter at my expense? I was quite shocked and alarmed by just how many stories I had that I could think of just like off the top of my head. And I feel like a lot of them, deeper shade now, are sort of near death experiences. And I don't know really why these situations happen to me or how I get myself into these precarious life risking circumstances, but it does seem to happen, you know, more often than it should. So that is, that's gonna, I'm gonna have to do some reflection on why that might be because I would like to survive. So we're going back in time today. We're going back, way back. We're going back to, I wanna say 2010. I'm pretty confident that was the year. So, you know, quite far back. I had just split up from my ex-husband. My divorce proceedings were beginning. And when I say just, it must have literally been a few weeks. It was right at the beginning, right at the beginning of that horrible process. And I was not in a good place whatsoever. I was in a dark place. I was in a painful place. I was in a sad place. I know this doesn't sound like it's gonna be a funny story, but it gets better, I promise. But it does start off, you know, a little dark, a little sad, as do, you know, a lot of my funny stories. Humor beats pain, humor beats pain. I'm gonna use a bit of this like sort of peachy shade next. So yes, I was sad. I was very lonely. I'd never lived on my own before. I, I literally moved out from my parents' house in with my ex-husband. I'd never lived as like an adult alone. Well, I'd never lived as a child alone either, to be clear. But I'd never lived alone. You know, I'd stayed alone for like a few months at a time with friends when I traveled and when I was in training camps and stuff, but I had never fully lived in a home on my own, especially having just gone through all this dark times. So one of my very, very good friends, work colleague at the time, but an amazing person, Gayatri, you know who you are. She and her husband and just a group of people, some of whom I knew, some I didn't. So her and Gayatri and her husband, who was incidentally my divorce, divorce lawyer, 
like get yourself friends who can get your, you through a divorce is my, my advice because that was incredible. So yeah, so Gayatri and her husband and then Kate and her partner. So Kate was another um, amazing friend that I worked with. Again, another person who got me through that dark, awful time. By the way, I'm using the like white shimmer shade now. Why am I so hot today? This radiator's on. I'm boiling. They were going on a skiing trip. So the two couples and then a single girl, Danielle, lovely Danielle, who I had never met. They were all going on a skiing trip. Gayatri and her husband, big skiers. Kate and her partner, I think her partner, her boyfriend, I'd never met him, but I think he was like big into snowboarding. Kate had never done anything, snowboarding or skiing, same as me. And then Danielle was like a full on boarding girl. Like she was big into snowboarding. So there was a mixture of abilities, but they were all going on a little trip to Chamonix. It must have been like literally weeks after my ex and I separated because obviously ski season in Chamonix, it's pretty much coming to an end by like, you know, March. And I think my ex and I split up in like January or be it began in January, probably fully finished somewhere in February. So it was very early days. I was like, I'd never been on a holiday like on my own without either my partner or my family. But you know, they were going for a weekend and they were like, you know, we've paid for the chalet. All you need to do is like pay for your flight. And I was like, I've never been skiing. I've never done any kind of snow sport, okay? And it's not really my jam. Like if I'm gonna go on a holiday, I wanna be on a sun lounger somewhere. I wanna be warm. I, if anything, wanna get a little bit burnt. I don't like to be cold. <laughs> and pay money for that to happen. But I feel like they really encouraged me, really pushed me like out of my comfort zone, like this was gonna be really good for me. I really needed to do this and get away and just like reset, get some mountain air in, you know? And it all sounded very therapeutic. So off I went and it was, it was very empowering, I will say, to like, you know, book flights and be like, that's it, you know, a few weeks after this, horror show to be like, I'm out of here, I'm done, I'm going, I'm off skiing, apparently. So I know at this point you're probably thinking, oh, I'm gonna have some kind of like skiing or snowboarding related accident. But no, no, <laughs> that would be like too predictable, too expected of a way to almost die while on a skiing trip. <laughs> Not me. I could never. So we get there and I, you know, rent my ski equipment. I think we were gonna be there like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, something like that. I book my snowboard lessons with my friend Kate because that's what she wanted to do, that, you know, her boyfriend was a snowboarder, so she wanted to do boarding. Here's where I realized was my first mistake because apparently what I know now, in my head, snowboarding was gonna be easier to learn than skiing, but I now know that if you're going to like have just a few days, that was, absolutely the wrong choice. I should have chosen skiing, but I, uh, you know, we live and we learn. Apparently I made the wrong choice and it would have been better to just ski for a couple of days, but I didn't know that. So I rented all my equipment, my snowboard, all of that stuff for like the first two days. And I had some snowboarding lessons and it was awful. <laughs> I hated it. It hurt a lot. I spent the entire time completely out of control while the instructor just screamed, lean forward, lean forward. And I was like, I can hear you. I just can't, you know? So that went on for like um, the first couple of days. I was covered in bruises. I felt like I'm gonna die at some point. I'm gonna break something at some point. I'm, I'm in so much pain. And what? why, why are we doing this? But I will say I loved Chamonix. It was stunning. I loved the place. We went out for some lovely dinners. We played a lot of games and it was very healing. So <laughs> that's something. New Laura Mercier Foundation. So the final day of activity is where it all fell slightly apart, okay? I had, like my rental equipment and everything had like expired, it had run out. I had only sort of intended to like use it. I think there was like, you know, a big sort of price difference if you wanted it for two days versus if you wanted it for like three. So I had like taken all my equipment like back to the rental place and I was done, I was done being bruised, I was done being injured, I was done being yelled at, I was done. But everybody else still had all of their equipment 
And so they were like, we're just gonna go for like a day in the mountains. We're gonna, you know, just no lessons. We're just gonna go about the place. I don't know, what is the correct term? We're just gonna have a day on the mountains doing what we like, you know, all together skiing and snowboarding as I'm sure is the correct technical term. So obviously I didn't have any of my equipment and I was, let me tell you, I was very happy. I just wanted to stay in the chalet on my own. I was, I was, I was not lonely. I was happy. I was sitting in the mountain air. I was, I was at one with my thoughts. I was healing. I was having some me time, some thought time, but my friends, which I do, I understand it was coming from a good place. They were not happy leaving me on my own. They were worried about me. They thought I'd be sad. They thought I'd be lonely. They like literally wanted like to force me to come with them against my will. And they were like telling me, oh, there's this lovely cafe, with, like, these amazing mountain views, like come up with us in the ski lift, just like you can just walk up there and enjoy, you know, a coffee in this glorious, like sunny mountain weather and just watch the skiing and we'll all meet you up there when we're done and have lunch and it will be a lovely day. That's how it was sold to me, okay? You know what's coming, don't you? That is not how this went. So the first problem is that I did not think for one second, I hadn't been in like a proper ski lift this whole time because I was on like the children's slopes having my lessons, okay? With literal five-year-olds running rings around me. And I didn't realize, I wouldn't suggest that I'm someone who's scared of heights. It would never have occurred to me that I would be scared of heights because I've never been, I've never been someone who's been scared of heights. That's never been a problem for me. Until that is, I get into this like gondola type thing to go up to the mountain and it is like all glass and suddenly we are getting so high and it's just like there's nothing underneath us. There's nothing underneath us for like I, I can only assume a million feet, okay, of just nothing and cliff. And oh my God, literally suddenly the panic is setting in. The panic is coming, it's coming for me. And like, it's coming out of nowhere. Do your forever concealer. And I wasn't expecting it. I have never been scared of, it didn't even, no one even said to me that this was a scary thing. We're just gonna go, like no, this wasn't even mentioned. It was such a nothing thing that it wasn't even mentioned. And obviously once you're on it, you can't get off you can't get out and I was on this lift with like all of my friends plus that was I mean what was that just giving myself the wonkiest nose ever perfect no one had like given me any kind of warning it wasn't even something that was mentioned I didn't even necessarily know that this is how we, we got up there it was like just such a nothing thing that no one even mentioned it and then suddenly we're halfway up and I'm like oh my god I'm gonna have a panic attack I'm gonna die get me out but also don't get me out because I don't want to plummet to my de my death so you know it was a it was a tough call tough choice of how I wanted to die in the gondola that was terrifying I was also trying like not to, to embarrass myself so my friend just literally I basically buried my face in her chest and she just like held me <laughs> we went out this thing so I was like crying my eyes out um but also quite not wanting to be like humiliated in front of these strangers in the lift so we were also laughing because it was funny like I was going to be fine I wasn't going to die it was kind of funny so we were all just like laughing and I was like laugh crying hysteria while like burying my face in my friend's chest trying like not to let anyone see that I'm laugh crying and yeah it was a, a torrid time it was not a ride that I wished to repeat, to be honest. And then immediately like, I get off and I'm like, give me a vodka or something because I've just been to heaven back. And there was no vodka at the other end, disappointingly. I feel like someone should be waiting at the end of that ride with like a shot, like straight off the bat, that's what I needed. So we got off and we were all like hysterically laughing at what had just happened. And immediately I'm thinking, how the hell am I getting down? Cause I'm not, get you'll never get me back on that thing, but apparently you can get down other ways. So that was fine. So anyway, at this point, everyone says, oh, ta-ta, bye-bye. They point to the cafe that is kind of just, you know, seemingly like an achievable distance away. And off they go on their little skiing Jolly. By the way, I don't know if I made this clear. I don't have any ski equipment. I'm literally in like sort of hiking boots and like just, you know, cold weather gear. I don't have 
a ski or a board or anything in sight. Not a pole, not anything related to the snow in any way. So I start walking in the general direction and these people have led me to believe that I'm just gonna like head for this cafe and, and I'll be there any moment. So I start heading for it and when I sort of turn the corner where I can see this like mountainside cafe is, you know, right in front of me, it is up a, a massive slope, a massive slope. I don't want to say a mountain because that seems like it would be um, an exaggeration. But let's just say when I see where it is and the only way that I can see to get there is this like huge steep slope I'm thinking oh and I'm looking around and there's like no one I am in the mountains alone there's no one here there is no path there's no way to get there that I can see we later learned that basically you get there on the lift so you, you ski down you go up on the lift and that's then an easy journey there which is why I think everyone thought it was going to be really easy to get there because they've literally just walked a few steps off the ski lift before but if you're on foot <laughs> that's not an option. New Hermes bronzer in shade four be careful it's very pigmented okay you've been warned. So I'm now thinking oh my god like I am just in the middle of the mountains and I am just stuck here what am I going to do? So I quickly realise I'm either just here forever and it's not that you can sort of communicate with your friends. Like I think I had my phone, but I, I can't imagine I had a great signal in the mountains. Although, wouldn't you think you'd have great signal? Because there's nothing like in the way. You would think, but I don't know if there's any sort of, you know, mobile phone like towers in the mountains. So yeah, I am now thinking I'm gonna die here. They're gonna find me like Charlotte the snowman. I'm gonna be a permanent fixture on the side of this mountain, frozen in time. Or I'm gonna have to try and scale this mountain that is apparently the only way to get to this cafe. It's not a great set of options, I'll say that, but that was literally the only thing I saw as an option. So I start to try and climb this mountain, like I said, in just basically like hiking boots. And it is like so steep, like at the, towards the end, I am almost lying and like, just like dragging myself up. And it's like ridiculous that I'm doing this, but I'm also thinking it's this or die here. So, you know, I was committed <laughs> to the hill <laughs> if I wanted to live. And I eventually, after literally almost dying on this hill of exhaustion, trying to scale this hill or this slope or this mountain, as it felt like at the time, to get to the top. As I finally breach the top of this hugely steep slope, coming towards me, running towards me, is a paraglider. This is the slope where you take off on your paraglider. People are running with these giant contraptions directly towards me and I'm clinging to the top of this mountain or this slope or this cliff or whatever you wanna call it, like some kind of, you know, snow meerkat clinging onto life and these people are running towards me and you can see their faces as they sort of see me, but it's too late, they can't stop running. They're going to go off the cliff and maybe take me with them. Um, so yeah, that happened. So I just lie flat and a couple of them sort of just like take off over the top of my head and then there's like a gap before the next person comes in which I literally like crawl for my life over the top and like to the side and then I just lie there, presumably half dead and pretty embarrassed <laughs> to be honest. It was not my finest hour but having survived I then am like really close to the cafe, okay? At this point, it is just the little stroll over there that my friends originally led me to believe it would be, you know, all along. But at this point, we've had some kind of James Bond episode to get here, but I'm finally here. I get to the cafe. I'm alive, I'm in one piece. And after sort of 30 minutes, this is becoming a funnier story than it was during it, you know? 
Um, so I finally have made it to the cafe. I sit down, I order a Diet Coke, which costs me like 25 pounds and is really small. And I'm there for like five minutes and all of my friends arrive and they've all had the day from hell. Like the, one of my friends, like one of the couples have had a big row <laughs> because they are just different, you know, levels of borders and it is the worst day ever and I'm now relaying them this story which everyone thinks is hilarious because they weren't there to watch me almost be decapitated by a paraglider. By the way, I'm using this new highlighter from Galan, another product that uh, is not released yet, but I told you before, you know, I know people, not people that can kill you, people that can get you makeup that is not released yet. Do you see this? It's so smooth and pretty. I'm obsessed with it, I absolutely love it. I can't wait for it to come out because I need the other shade. I absolutely think this is a delightful highlighter. So luckily, you know, I didn't die. I found my friends now and they all think this is hilarious because like I said, they weren't there to see how bad it was and how close to death I was on at least probably four different occasions, but all is now forgiven. All now seems very funny, very amusing, but um, it was not at the time. So anyway, now I they are able to like get me down and like very easily, I just go on the ski lift with them and it was <laughs> very easy and untraumatic. New Chanel Fantasy Blush, which I have been really loving. I do have to build it up a fair amount it is more subtle on me i think this will be one that i can't really use in summer but it's so pretty the finish is just glorious i don't know a lot of people have been asking me when is this coming to america when is it coming i've heard i don't know from like so you guys mostly that you have some of you have been being told that it's coming in like may or like it's, it's going to be like really long to the us i think all of these things just always turn out to be inaccurate i feel like whenever i get told oh yeah that's coming here in such and such time it always comes at a different time so i've heard it's coming to the us it's now sold out here in the uk so if you really want this it is going to probably sell out in the us when slash if it does end up there so you know you have been warned so yes as i was saying we got down the mountains we then you know drank ourselves silly we then you know just enjoyed the rest of the mountain day and we went home with that slightly ridiculous story with me but i will say that i'm so glad i went because i really did feel so proud of myself for doing that for like going you know not only on a little holiday alone without a partner, but like going snowboarding, you know, albeit I did nearly die on the mountain. Not in the way you think when you go snowboarding, you know, you think if you say to someone, oh, I went snowboarding, I nearly died. That's probably not the way you think that would have happened. I feel like that's probably a pretty like unique experience for most people. And it definitely feels like the sort of thing that like only happens to me. And like I said, I need to do some real sort of soul searching to work out why that is, because I'd like to avoid it happening again. So I have two of the new lipsticks from Laura Mercier. These are the high vibe lip colors and I picked up the shades Blaze and Love. So it was like a sort of one that was a bit of a sort of brighter, more exciting spring color and like the one nude that I could find. So first let's try Blaze. Mm, vanilla, smells like Max lipstick scent. I was not expecting that amount of pigment, you know. I mean, I had heard that they were pigmented, but There is Blaze. I love that they click back down, like so many of these lipsticks don't, and that's such a nice amount of shine as well. They feel very comfortable. Really nice, love that shade. It's kind of like a spring summer pop of color, but very wearable at the same time. And then we have Love.
This is such a nice, kind of deeper, warmer nude, but really, again, really wearable. I found that it's really easy to apply and get a nice sort of quite defined edge because the applicator and because it has so much pigmentation, they feel very nice and light on the lips as well. They do feel like they're, this one feels like it's kind of drying down a bit. It's, I'm presuming it's gonna transfer quite a bit. Yeah, as you would expect with a, a sort of shinier lipstick, maybe not as, as messy as you would think though. But really pretty and a lovely amount of shine. Okay, so there you have it. Let me give you my thoughts on everything I used today. So first up, this little quint from Dior, not yet available. I like it. It is very soft and subtle. It's not going to give you like Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona intensity. You know, it is very Dior. It's very classy and elegant and refined. There aren't any mattes in here. Everything is like a satin to like a metallic, a softer metallic. So there's no mattes in here. So bear that in mind if that's something that is an essential for you. But I think everything performs really nicely. I think it gives a really nice, quite refined, sophisticated, elegant, but soft and subtle look. So if that is your vibe, it's a really nice, subtle, neutral color story that's a bit pretty and it's a little bit spring with the sort of peachy shades in there as well. I really like it. I don't think it's anything groundbreaking, but you know, I've been really enjoying it for like those sort of no makeup or low makeup days, those natural understated days. It's a really nice, elegant, understated little palette. Now the Laura Mercier foundation, as I said, I like this. It's not like an obsession love. I'm still using it. It's still kind of made it into my rotation, but it's not sort of like a top five foundation. I think it looks very natural and it gives like a light coverage. I still have some skin showing through. I still have like a bit of redness showing through if it's like a bad day for my red redness, but it's a nice lightweight, very uber natural looking skin like foundation it doesn't wear incredibly well it definitely is like breaking down on my chin gone from my nose and looking a little shiny on my forehead by like maybe seven hours i would say if not setting with powder so that's something to be aware of but i think it's it's beautiful as far as the finish and how it looks on the skin and it's very flattering. The Galon highlighter, I am, as I mentioned in my roundup, I absolutely love it. I would absolutely be getting the other shade once these are released. I think they're gorgeous. So smooth and luminous and glowy, but in a nice natural way. I absolutely love it. I've already told you about that. The same thing goes for the Chanel blush. You know, nothing has changed from my roundup. Nothing new to add. Just really wanted to show you it in action. On the skin is obviously a very pretty, glowy pink blush, whether or not you need to spend 50 pounds on it or if it would add something super unique to your collection is probably a question for yourself, you know? I, I don't know what your collection looks like. I'm not that nosy. A lot of people have been asking me if I'm going to pick up shade three in the Hermes bronzer. Obviously I have two and four, annoyingly. I can use four, as you saw today, and it not be too much. I use a fairly light hand and it's absolutely perfect for me. I love this reddish, undertone you know especially in summer that is like the tone that my skin takes on when it gets the sun so yeah i think this is beautiful i've already told you all about these what i'm waiting for is the refills to launch because these are refillable and i don't want to you know i've now got two of the bronzers so i will pick up shade three but i'm going to wait until the refills are here it just makes more financial sense you know but yes i will report back on that shade three however i have seen a few people using shade three and i don't it's no cooler than any of the other shades i think all of these bronzer shades are super warm so i think tara i think tara has shades three and four so maybe check her review out if you want to see three and four and i think tara actually preferred shade three just because four is quite dark so check out tara lynn's review if you are interested in seeing shade three in action now this is the very first time i use these laura mercier lipsticks and i'm really enjoying them i think they both were lovely colors i really like this 
shiny finish, but it doesn't feel sticky at all. Like your hair, it's not like a gloss, your hair's gonna stick to it. I know people hate that. And it doesn't feel sticky, it doesn't feel too shiny. It's transferring everywhere. It feels very comfortable and flattering. And I love the shine. And the pigmentation was a shock. I was not expecting it. So there you have it. Please let me know if you've tried any of these products, what your thoughts are, how you're getting along. And if you have ever almost been killed by your friends on a snowboarding trip to Chamonix. I'd like to believe I'm not the only one, but I imagine I am the only one that exactly those sets of circumstances have happened to, okay? So yeah. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.